Hey, what is going on, guys? Rudinell here, coming back at you with another batch tutorial. All right, now in the last couple of videos, we've been taking a look at arrays, and we're going to continue to do so now. And in fact, in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can remove an index from an array. But that's exactly it. I'm going to be showing you how you can remove an index from an array. I want to leave it up to you guys to actually try and build your own function without my help to try and see if you guys can actually remove um, a value from the array by actually like passing a value <clears throat> to the array remove function and it would loop through the array and test if the current position inside the array if the current value that it's looking at in the array is equal to the value that you've passed in then remove that so that actually looks at the values of the array and I'm actually going to be working with the number and the index of the array so um, I'll leave it up to you guys to see if you can do that maybe leave it as like a post video challenge obviously you don't have to do it if you don't want to but it'd be pretty cool if you guys could put it together all by yourself so uh, anyway let's move on to things let's actually get things ready to go I'll bring down CMD and I'll go ahead and a new script I think I'll call mine what is it uh, yeah array remove array remove dot bat can save that. I'll do add echo off. And the syntax that we'll be looking at is call array remove with our array name, the delimiter, and the position that we're going to be removing it from. So we're going to need the delimiter as a string we can work with. So I'll set delimiter to become a string. I'll set our position to be something we can work with. That's going to be the third argument that we pass in. And we need that new array that we've been working with. That's going to keep track of the array as a string, and so we can work with it. Because remember in the last video, what we actually did is we sort of like reconstructed the array by looking at each individual piece. And we're going to be doing that today. It's, a, it, it's actually a really similar technique, the way we set up this functionality. And... Um, all it does is it sort of changes our conditional statements order sort of thing, and it actually tests for a little bit more at the very end of the loop. So uh, once we've got our loop all started, because we are going to be going through each individual piece of the array, we can actually test if the current position is actually not equal to the position that we're trying to remove, then we can go ahead and actually set the... Um, uh, new array to equal the current position inside the array. So the way we set this up is by testing if it's not the end, because we still want to keep track of the delimiter in there. So if our current position is not equal to the limit, I'm sorry, if it is equal to the limit, that is when we'll set the new array to equal what we have of the new array so far with the array at the current position. And we're going to copy this because we're still going to use it if it's not we're just going to have the delimiter tacked on to the end of it. And then we're all done the loop. That's uh, that's really all there is to it. But when we're out of the loop, we want to make sure that if it's... um if the position that we were trying to remove from actually is the very end of the array, or if, our, if it's our limit, then what we want to do is remove the delimiter, because that's still there at the end. So we actually subtract sort of like one from our string. So if the position is equal to our limit, what we can do is go ahead and let's say set new array to equal the value of new array with our colon and tilde for substring notation we go from zero to the negative one now negative one is like the uh, almost last character and then what we'll do is go ahead and call create array <coughs> our array name pass in the delimiter along with passing in the value of our new array. So uh, that should be all of it. If we go ahead and create a new script with this, What we can do is we can call create array. I'll create my array, and then let's say who is there? I guess I don't know. Why not? And then uh, if I go ahead and echo out the array before we actually modify it, let's see if you ready. Script who is there? If I call array remove array and 
index, uh, limiter anyway. Let's say we remove the zeroth position, so it'll remove who. They'll want to go ahead and echo it out. It removes who, and is there is still is there. <laughs> there are two items in there, and we can obviously index each, each individual piece of them. Let's say we uh, uh, we get rid of one, so who there? <laughs> and uh, let's say we get rid of the last character, who is, and we can still get the length, and that will be returned properly because we don't have a delimiter at the end of it. And we can even remove three, but uh, nothing is going to go wrong there because we don't have any of those indexes. So this works pretty well for us because it's not actually going to be removing anything. But uh, there you go, guys. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And you know, it might actually be a good idea to test whether or not the position that we pass to it is greater than the length of the... Um, you know, that's a great idea. Because that way we don't have to bother looping. You see what I'm getting at? If we were to test if the position is greater than the limits, would we be testing for the limit or would we be testing for the length? Let's find out. Let's do limit. We'll go to the very end. If I had a script, it says who is there. That's not a problem. Put three in. Get rid of that one. Two. All right. That works perfectly fine for us, and we don't have to bother about looping. Awesome. Whoa. Uh, it looks like we even added some more functionality to it. Really just actually skipped a loop. So that's a good way to like test the information without having to uh, actually do any manipulation. Thank you guys for watching, though. I hope you enjoyed this. And before I go, let's actually put this inside of our uh, system path. Go ahead and put it in our tools. And put it in C, Windows System 32 plop it right in there, and we're ready to go. Alright, thank you very much, guys. I will uh, see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.